Good morning, guys. This is Talk About It Tuesday. Now, I don't know what we're going to be talking about today. But I just wanted to come in on this marvelous Tuesday and tell you that mental health is wealth. Mental freaking health is wealth. Untreated. Untreated mental illness is very tiring. And I don't even think that we realize how tiring it is on our loved ones. Because you, you're untreated. So you don't know mental health issues. I just exactly that. We don't want to talk about anything that's the Debbie. De oh, my God. I hate math. This is a woman. Verbenia Lavender. Baby, when I tell you. Ooh. It smells hella, hella, hella masculine. It, sh it, it, it literally smells like I just put. Ugh. It's got verb verbenia and lavender in it. But that's not what it thinks. I'm just causing a masculine smell. It's like a bunch of musk and boo. Now, this on your man would smell kind of sexy. <laughs> With his masculine energy. I think this was... I don't know how much I paid for this. This from Amazon, my sterling silver. My other ring, I got a sterling silver too. But it's a little small, so I'm going to have the two of the rings that I ordered. The angel wings and the um other one. I'm going to have to order them in some sevens or eights. I need a seven. I ain't never needed an eight, but sometimes... So I'm surprised, like, well, I got this one from Ran True to Size. This is seven. See, whoever I got that from, that ran uh, literally True to Size. So, yeah. Honey. Time for breakfast. Time for a big girl to have a breakfast. You hear me? See, it. A boy be wanting to supper. And I think the color purple was good. I don't know if I'm, I don't know if it was better than the first one. Or well, maybe I'm just old school. Maybe I have to watch it again. Uh, I thought it's a, it's, it's, it's really literally like a musical. I don't know. I have to watch it again, but yeah. You know. Stuff that, but uh, Celie does have an imagination. To me, she kind of had an imagination in the first one. She all, well, I don't know, but this is what I'll say. In the first one, she told him everything you done to me. I already done to you. She said, I may be poor. I may be black. But dear God, I'm still here. Celie definitely had an imagination. To be beat. To be called poor, black, and ugly. Still, to, to the, the the courage to stand up. Because Suge Avery gave her courage to leave Mr. <laughs> say what you want to say. Somebody had an imagination. Suge Avery gave her the courage. Because Suge was everybody's honey. She, and I like Suge. She said Suge. She's free will. She's free spirit. But Suge... Didn't give a darn what you say. Only person that she really cared was was said about her was her parents. Was her daddy. You want to know why? Because low-key, that daddy must have knew that she liked women too. That's why that part where, oh, good God. That's why that part where they were in the tub. And she said, my pa loved me. Except he just don't know it. Now he knew it. They both actually loved each other. I think she was frustrated because she was letting him down. And I guess he knew that, you know. But like I said, they that's a true example of tough love. And then God turning around and fixing it. Because as you can see, he loved his daddy. She loved her daddy. And what did she say? See, daddy, sinners have a song 
Sinners have song too. Sinners have soul. Or whatever. But you get the drip. I like Shug. Because she was free spirit. Who she sleep with is who she sleep with. She was a party girl. So she probably tried a bunch of different stuff. It was Liz from back in the, in the day. But it went out. Nowhere near hell. No, nah, you be a lesbian. You was you was a closet lesbian, like how they was. Just like she said, "Ooh, sugar like honey, and eyes like a bee." That's when Seely started getting imagination. That's when Seely started dreaming and hoping. You know, when she said it. You know, she knew that regardless of one day, she told him. Whatever that meant right there, when somebody do this, she say, everything you done to me, I already done to you. Until you do right by me, everything you think about is going to crumble. Now, baby, if that don't sound like she got imagination, she had to. You got to have your imagination to be able to leave. Shug, Shug may have given her imagination. Shug gave Seely feelings that she never knew she could have. You heard her when she said, well, Miss Seely, technically, you still a virgin. And uh, maybe Shug wanted a little taste. See what she can get to. I don't know, but Seely says sugar's like honey and eyes like a bee. I want to follow her everywhere she go because I think sugar, from what it say outside of her sister, Suge was the only other person who loved Seely from what I gathered, you know. So she said, you know, sugar like a honey and I like a bee. She was speaking metaphorically. She That woman definitely had imagination. We thought that Seely didn't have her imagination. She might not have had her imagination like she got in the new one. But, and hands down, Fantasia stumped the hole in Seely. Nah, you got to give it to Whoopi. Whoopi played the hell out of that. Whoopi should have had 15 Oscars first playing Seely. And Miss Sophia should have had 15 Oscars for playing Miss Sophia, too. You did, you dig? We got to give credit to the first cast. But Oprah turned around. Maybe that maybe that's what Oprah did. Maybe she turned it around to where black girls still get recognized for that movie. I think that was the point behind all of this. Yeah, Oprah have. Oprah, you have been in. You have been in the news for some stuff. And at Oprah, from little bitty old supporter that's been watching you since she was a kid. Fix it with Monique. That's our sister. That's our auntie. Fix it with Monique. She kicked ass in Precious. She kicked ass in Precious. A movie to where when I seen her sit there crying at that social worker desk, I say, baby, she finna get an Oscar. And she got an Oscar. But then to have, because I'm going to tell y'all this. I've been listening to Monique and her husband the whole time. Monique's story ain't really changed. She ain't forgot none of the details. See, the truth don't need no proof. And they actually have which means a lot of people wanted to support her but oprah for whatever reason she whatever power oprah has somewhere put it like that she couldn't probably get involved with monique i'm not taking up for oprah i'm just saying maybe that's how it works in hollywood but i don't think that monique should have been Monique and Monique should not have been vandalized like that. Banned, you know what I mean? Sabotaged. Y'all sabotaged her. That wasn't right. And now Lee Daniels, he did apologize. Had to talk Lee. We get it that some of the stuff is out of y'all hands. But a lot of us stood have stood, stood with Monique. I've been standing with her all this time because I thought she was telling the truth. But when you go against money and power, 
Money for the love of money is the root to all evil. Monique was a big time actress, had just earned an Oscar. Why would she sacrifice her career like that to get the truth out? Because everybody else didn't. Even the ones that knew that Monique was telling the truth. But I do, and, and I believe Taraji, too. Nobody's going to make that up. Watch all of the people that's going to start coming out, the, the black women telling their stories about how they're underpaid, how they're this, how they're that. Because it's awfully funny, Monique. I mean, Taraji's saying the same thing that Monique is saying. Just seven or eight years later, probably because, probably because everybody's tired. But Oprah... As a fan baby who have watched you for years. As a fan who have watched you for years, as a supporter, we are, uh, a lot of us Black Girl Magic looked up to you. You was the first one to do it. You was three different sizes. You was big, small, medium, and small, like how you is now. And you did it. You didn't care. You hosted fat. You hosted little. If anybody should have understood the, the Monique, you should have. And I believe you did. Because you were big too and you were getting those parts. You 86, Sophia. We can't deny that. You did the part. You told Hoppo to beat me and you was throwing them hands. That's how I still look at you in real life. Like, whoo, Oprah would throw them hands. You're just not fighting out, which means I looked at you as a strong woman. I looked at Monique as a strong woman. Whether you could have legally helped her. And that's why they said off the record. Maybe one time the Perry wanted to meet with her. Maybe that's why he wanted to do it off the record. Because he didn't want to risk losing everything he had either. So I get it from both sides. But honestly, I think y'all owe Monique an apology. That's what we're going to talk about on Tuesday today. I think Monique is owed an apology, especially if what she was saying was correct. She didn't owe y'all no more money. Why would you expect her? And she has a family to feed like everybody else. She wasn't being this difficult if she fulfilled the contract. You know, anything extra that you wanted her to do, she should have been paid for it. Why would she have to go overseas and stuff like that for free on her own dime? Now that she promoting a movie that's to make all of these millions of dollars because I love the precious. Now, I didn't watch it again. You know, but the incest, the molestation, the baby that precious went through and stuff like that, I didn't want to see that no more. It was okay, but it, yeah, I didn't want to see it no more. So, that's all I'm saying. Monique, I think y'all owe that baby an apology. I mean, y'all think that you are owed an apology. I think you should have been compensated, but that's just my opinion. Her and her family took a hit. You know how much money? Good thing she probably got residual somewhere, but from the looks of it, it don't even look like she was paid properly from the Parkers. And the Parkers is still on. Moesha still runs. Martin still runs. Martin, Mo, Mo, uh, Martin and Moesha and the Parkers come on the same. But I bet you Martin getting his paper for his residual. That's work he did 20 years ago. That's work they did 10, 15 years ago. She shouldn't be. She should have a nice bag. But to, but to try to tank her image like that and to say she's, well, she can't be that hard to work with. She got y'all an Oscar for that movie. Right is right and wrong is wrong. Whether anybody wanted to deal with Monique or not, you guys should have at least supported her. Even if you couldn't, it's a way to do everything. Like you said, she didn't want to go off the record because she didn't want to look like a liar. But I don't know. At this point, if y'all want to meet off the record. But y'all apparently saw everything she was saying was the truth. Because ain't nobody never really called her a lie. Because y'all don't want her to sue y'all for defamation. So all y'all did was turn around and say, if, if she was lying on them like that, the way... Her and TP and Nelly Daniel, all the people got money. They could have sued Monique for defamation. They never did. They never did. And Monique, I stand with you. I stand with Taraji. Hope y'all start getting the money that y'all work. Monique do be handpicked for a lot of them roles because they know 
that she gonna ask some they know. Taraj gonna ask some they knew who was gonna play Seeley. They knew Fantasia was gonna play Seeley from the time she hit Hollywood. Don't think they didn't. Who better to play Seeley? And Seeley can sing. See, in the first one, Seeley, we didn't we didn't know if Seeley could sing or not. But we knew that she could sing. She Seeley could sing. That's what made the movie interesting to me this time, too, that she could sing. She had an imagination, you know. And even if y'all couldn't mess with Monique legally, that should have been handled. That should have been handled another way, guys. I'm sorry. I just... Right is right and wrong is wrong. And I think the situation with Auntie Monique, y'all should try to fix it. Especially if she was telling the truth. She didn't know y'all nothing through the contract. Why would you expect her to go promote? I'm confused on that part myself. Why would y'all expect her to go promote for free? But anyway, that's just my thoughts on that. That's just my thoughts on the movie. This is Talk About It Tuesday. Good job all of you actresses, actors and actresses. Y'all did stump a hole in the ground. All right? Girl, you did, you did Sophia. You did. And honey, you did Fantasia, you did Whoopi. You heard me. Oh, y'all, Taraji, you stumped Suge. You hear me? Made people, because oh, Suge was always one of my favorite. Well, Suge was my favorite character anyway, especially when she sang, maybe. God is trying to tell you something. That was my favorite part. Taraji, hand, 10 toes down. One of y'all win an Oscar, all oh, y'all won. Oh, y'all should have got an Emmy off that performance. But that's just me. But when if one win, we all win. Even through your brokenness, Taraji, you still stood. And watch how God gonna bless you. You gonna have so many movie roles and money offers, you gonna have to turn them down. Mark my words. Taraji, you're gonna have so many movie roles. And Monique. Y'all finna have so many movie roles, you gonna have to turn them down. And... Picked. Remember what Monique said and what Cat Williams said. Hand picked. Hand picked means you don't audition. Hand picked means you're special. Hand picked. Say, say, Taraji means hope, I think. Huh, so honey, come on now. But anyway, we love you, Taraji. Love you, all the cast of the new color purple, but you got to give homage to the. Danny Glover and them. Danny Glover and Hoopy and Ophara. Because, baby, y'all did that too. From Mother Maserati. To be continued.